the last time I played for the Giants was six years ago to the day against Von Miller Sunday Night Football when he was with the Denver Broncos, and I had to go out to right tackle on a whim that week. Um, so like, there's just been so many crazy things that have brought this thing all full circle. My, it's, it's, it's. I don't know what it is. It's something more. It's like there's some there's something in the air. <laughs> Obviously, you were watching from the outside before you came in here with all of the injuries and the rotating that they've had on the yeah. offensive line. Have you ever seen anything like this in your career in, in, in a given season with a unit going through so much? Yeah, for sure. I mean, with, with how young the offensive line is, moving guys around, trying to find where guys best fit. Injuries happen. Guys have to slide over. Um, fighting through adversity. That's something that I've always been a big proponent of, how you handle adversity and how you come out the other side. And this group is being tested right now, and it's only going to make them better in the long haul. Like we have so much talent, it's just doing little things and just and just sealing off some things. So we're getting those things adjusted, and I'm, I'm excited for the group. You pretty were you pretty excited you'd be signed today? No. Yeah, I was I was super excited. Um, yeah, got I got into the late hours yesterday, and we got it done. Um, you know, it's the business of football. You know, if you. I started a podcast this offseason called Net Worth with Justin Pugh, and it talks about the business of football and life for what players go through and, and what fans go through and the ecosystem of it. So this was like the, the purest example of business of football because everything that I said and exactly how I said it is exactly how it happened. And I don't know if that's just – I've been around so long, I knew how it was going to go. The only thing I didn't account for is the 80 plays. Yeah, I didn't account – or left tackle. Yeah. But – it's football. You got to get up and play. Like, I wasn't going to let the team down. I wasn't going to let the guy next to me down. That's that's not how I roll. Right. Right. Yeah. Did you have other opportunities coming off that game? Like, had your agent made you aware? Like, there was. Ne I mean, look, there was never anything I wanted to do to sign here. Okay. Like, my whole goal was to come here, prove I'm healthy. I told everyone it was a, it was a tryout for me to come back and go on the practice squad. I went on the practice squad. I proved I was healthy. I did everything they asked, and, and here we are. So now I get to wrap this thing up as a giant. When Does it comes any part to this, of this locker room remind you of the one you you left? I mean, everyone besides the players are the same. <laughs> Every personnel person is all you guys are the same. Like this feels very familiar, and it took me a little. It was like riding a bike, you know, meeting new guys. And, and like I said last week, I don't think all the guys even knew who I was or that I that I had played here before or any of the history, and. <laughs> It made me feel really good because after that game, every one of my teammates and coaches and guys that I play with from my first year in the league to last year in the league texted me and said, you have no idea like, how proud we are of you. And that means more to me than anything. There's no dollar amount you can put on that. To earn the respect of these guys in the locker room and my fellow teammates and coaches like that, that's what gets me emotional or excited, all, all of it. How much better do you think you can be actually practicing at left tackle this week. Yeah, obviously I had some cadence issues. Like the silent cadence is different for every team. And obviously at guard, I can really perif the ball a lot better. So that was a that was a major factor. And I was getting out, you know, jumping the count. And then I was a little too slow. And I remember coming to the sideline, like, all right, I figured the snap count out. Like, we're good to go. Like, I'm just going to go out there and fight. And that's all I, all I can promise you is I'll go out there and fight. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's not always going to be pretty. And that's not how this game is. It's just I'm going to go out there and battle and give everything I got. And... And that's, that's all I, I can ask. And there's going to be bad plays. There's going to be plays that mess up. And there's some, like, story of life in there where it's like you get back up and you fight, you, you clear that play. And that's something that I think is, uh, is, is good for anybody. How did you come up with uh, Straight Off the Couch? And when did you actually even record that? <laughs> so Straight Off the Couch, I was riding the bus to, the, to uh, the hotel when we landed in Buffalo. And they're like, hey, you have to shoot your Sunday night football. And obviously, I went to Syracuse University, and I always say Syracuse University. I still love Syracuse University. So all my Syracuse folks out there, I, I give you your flowers. I love you so much. But, like, I truly was watching last Sunday night football on the couch. And it just hit me. Like, this is, like, the most – I was a fan last week watching football. Like, how many times can you be a fan watching your favorite team, the New York Giants, and the next Sunday you get to go play for that team on Sunday night football? Like, that – is like a story. That is a story. And I'm just, I really came straight off the couch and started on, on Sunday Night Football. And nobody can ever take that away from me. And I'm always like, if, if I never played another football game and that was my last one, I could go out like that. And then obviously the Giants called the next day and said, hey, let's get, let's get a deal done. So we were able to, to come back and keep doing it. Did anybody else know you did that like that? Uh, Jay, so Jay, I got to give a huge shout out to, to Jalen Mayfield. Um, he, I was going to do fresh off the couch and he's like, Straight off the he said straight off the couch to me when he came out. I was like, that's it, that's it right there. So I went in and did it. So it was me, him, and Devito in there doing our Sunday night football. And Devito's got some good personality. So he he they were they were my hype guys. 
and I'm sure you got a lot of reactions to that. I mean, all your friends, everybody saw that. Yeah, it, my, I, I just called my wife after. That was the only person I really wanted to talk to after the game. And uh, she's like, have you seen the, like, the internet? And I was like, I've seen I have four or 500 text messages right now. And then I checked my phone and, and saw it. And, and like, that's how I want to go out, like laughing, having fun. This is too stressful. Like, this is not an easy place to play, as we've seen. And if we can go out and start having some fun and turn this thing around, like, that's my whole goal is to, to have some good vibes, to have fun and, and, and go win some games. And that's what we have to do now. I know you said that this was the only place you wanted to be, but did you have other teams reach out to you and, and inquire about signing? Because when you went to the practice squad, anyone could make a call. Yeah, I mean, look, teams teams could reach out, but there was never even a doubt in my mind. Like, I came here for a reason. Like, I'm, a, I could have, like, before I even signed here, I had other options. But there was never a thought in my mind. Like, I've said from, honestly, this is all Jerry Seinfeld's fault. Like, honestly. <laughs> I was at a, a restaurant, Teresi, in New York, like, four months ago over the summer. And... Yeah. My wife and I are sitting there with some friends and like across from us is Jerry Seinfeld. And I hear his voice and it was the most quintessential New York moment of all time. And I remember texting my agent, like, text the Giants, like, I want to come back. Like, so really, if it wasn't for Jerry Seinfeld, I don't know if I'd be here right now. And he, you know, he's the greatest. He's the, he's the GOAT. But um, from that point forward, I, I knew I wanted to come back here. And it, it was just everything worked out perfectly. They played in Arizona. They stayed there for a week. I came and worked out 10 minutes from my house. They call me right after that. I fly in here. Like the way I started, it, it just, it was, it's, it, it was meant to be.